This is already an excellent example for an extreme stream, I mean, stream of people flowing into this room almost endlessly. So, in 2010, I was giving a presentation at the first Scala Days. I think it was about um, a Scala DSL for OSGI. And a little later, I added OSGI support to Akka, unfortunately. Um, and now this cycle sort of closes because I'm talking about Akka again here at this 10th, or is it the 9th anniversary? I don't know, 2010 until 2019, whatever. Let's call it the 10th. I'm very glad to be here, anyway. Okay, so in this presentation, I would like to talk about some advanced features of Arca Streams. Not necessarily extreme, but I think it sounds good, stream and extreme. Who of you knows Arca Streams or, is, or has been using Arca Streams? That's good, okay. So, what I'm going to show you is already used in production at Moya. Moya offers ride sharing in a couple of uh, German cities like Hamburg and Hanover. And uh, when I became engaged in that project last year, um, I had the chance to work on a particular sub-project, which was a greenfield project, and we decided to use a lot of Arca streams in it. So what you're seeing today is not the actual code base of Moya, but um, a very simplified form of the things which are really used there. Moya uh, offers ride sharing with those beautiful shuttles I have shown on the previous slide. They are running on AWS using Kubernetes. They have a microservice architecture for large parts of their systems, and for some services they are using Arca HTTP and for some, they are also using Arca Cluster. And if you want to know more about how to manage an Arca Cluster on Kubernetes, you can later today at 15.30 go to the talk of my buddy, Markus Juer, who is working at Moya, who will cover all the details. So when I was engaged in that project, we had the following situation, which is a simplification in this diagram. There's an Arca HTTP API offering Protobuf and uh, JSON endpoints, then taking the HTTP requests and marshalling them to domain requests, and then going for actors, which most of you probably do when you use Arca HTTP, right? Um, and then some actors talk to other actors, which might even live on different nodes, as shown here. Now, what do you think could be a problem in the scenario when Kubernetes decides to shut down a pod? Any ideas? Okay, I couldn't hear anything. Sorry for that. Um, you could lose requests, right? In particular, if Kubernetes decides to shut down node B, while this actor here has not yet replied to this actor over there, the request which has started in node A cannot get completed. So you lose that request. And potentially Moya is losing a customer. So that's no good. Um, so what could we do against that? First of all, we could use a feature of ArcHTP, which is the terminate method, which is defined on the server binding class. Interestingly, that has been added around June last year, and it gives you what you want. It does no longer accept new connection, but it drains existing connections. So until this termination deadline, um, all the requests that had been accepted will be completed. And only then the shutdown of uh, the actor system will continue. This is really good, and we 
added that in the meantime. Initially, we didn't know about it, but in the meantime, we added it. But the question is, is this good enough? Let's revisit this picture here. The terminate method refers to the server binding. So if this node A accepts a request and Kubernetes wants to shut down node A, all is good. The shutdown will be delayed. But what if Kubernetes wants to shut down node B? Well, node B is not related to any HTTP request directly. So the logic shown here, sorry, here on node B does not delay the shutdown of node B. So we would still lose requests. And that's no good, as I said. So we needed to come up with something better. And our design idea was, why not implement all the request handling processes with Arca streams? Using Arca streams would also give us other benefits, for example, typedness. Well, there's typed actors, or Arca type now, but Arca streams is also typed, and back pressure. So this seems like a great idea, and in more detail, a request handling process conceptually is a flow from a request to a response or to an either error or response. And in this design approach, actors are only used for, for state which is spanning multiple processing stages or processes. So for data transformation, use streams and for uh, long-lived state, use actors. So use a lot less actors than before. And the, the running processes, the materialized processes, they need to be suitably hooked into the coordinated shutdown to no longer accept new requests and delay the shutdown until accepted requests have been processed. And that means have been processed across the whole pipeline here. And this is still the actor pipeline, sorry. The high-level design of, of the new approach would be that we have those running streams, running processes, here the red boxes, um, on multiple nodes. And if a request comes in, it runs through various stages in this process. And at some point, this process branches out to some other running process on another node. And uh, the response from that process comes back here, and so on and so on. And it's important that those processes, those two processes in this example, are suitably hooked into coordinated shutdown of their respective machines to avoid losing requests. Does that idea make sense? Yeah. Great. So benefits would be compos uh, compositionality, hard word for me to say. You could compose your overall system from steps from logical steps from flows or maybe even more complicated or complex graphs but you could have reasonably small uh, sized processing steps then of course you get back pressure um, which is not the case if you uh, have a http route that is directly asking an actor and the most important thing lossless deployments but of course, there are some challenges, and I'm trying to address those during the rest of the pro, uh, talk. So how can we link Arca HTTP routes and processes? Then how can we connect to running processes? I mean, what does that mean at all? And how can we even stream across cluster nodes? These are probably interesting questions to you, unless you have them already solved. But normally, you define a flow. You materialize it, everything is local. It, elements don't branch out of the flow into some other running stream and so on. So these are really interesting challenges and we have solved all of them. And to solve those, we have applied those tools. So these are a couple of these advanced features of Arca Streams like flow with context. And to be honest, that isn't yet used at Moya, hopefully. We will get there. Source queue, merge hub, kill switch, sync ref or so, uh, stream refs for remote streaming and restart sync. Do you know all of these? 
Who knows all of these and has used all of those? Okay. Who has used at least one of these? Okay, That's, that makes sense. Okay, so I have a very simplified demo. Um, it's a HTTP endpoint called shuffle text. You pass a text like hello Lausanne, and then after a short delay, which is the first processing stage, you have another processing stage that shuffles the individual word, words, like, yeah, you can almost read it, Lelo, Lanzo, I don't know. Um, you can still read it probably uh, if you know what the origin was. <clears throat> so that's the simplified demo. Let me just run it for you here to make sure everything works. Okay, the API is listening, let me get rid of that. And two seconds delay, and then the result is there. Great. If you run it again, two seconds delay, probably differently shuffled, yes. So let's try to solve the first challenge, how to link Arca HTTP routes and processes. An Arca HTTP route, in this scenario, looks like this. If we focus on this part here, we have a path, shuffle text, we take the get word or HTTP verb, we extract the parameter text, and then we want to create the shuffled text, and then we complete the request. Shuffle text is a future string, and in this demo here, at that stage, we are already using a, um, a flow or a running stream, um, which is defined here. So we have a single request method that starts with a source single um, of the text to be shuffled. Then we go via a flow, which is defined up there, and this flow has this delay, and it does a map async with 42, because that's the best number ever. And then it branches out to another flow, sorry, stream, because it runs this other flow. This other flow is called shuffle word. And shuffle word is called with all the words after splitting the initial text by the blank. Okay, and then we map back to the proper outcome of this flow. So the type, the process type is a flow up here from the command shuffle text to text shuffled. Of course, this is not what we want in the API because here we are materializing and running this stream for every request that doesn't fit into our design idea. In our design idea, we want to have long-lasting, uh, long long-running flows, or yeah, because only those can properly hook up into the coordinated shutdown and also apply back pressure to all the backend systems like, uh, I don't know, um, Kinesis or uh, AMQP or whatever is used and talking to external services where we have global rate limits and things like that. So we cannot just rerun for every request a flow because then all these things don't apply because source single is not really something where you can apply rate limits and stuff, right? Okay, so this is just for the demo to make it work. So we need to find a better way. And in order to feed something into a running stream, we can use a source queue. A source queue is a source which materializes to something called source queue, or even source queue with complete, but we can ignore the with complete for this talk. Um, you have to pass a buffer size, we just use one here, and an overflow strategy. For the endpoints of our processes, drop new seems to be a good strategy because this gives us fail fast if our service itself is overloaded. If the process cannot accept any new requests, it, it will drop the new request, and that means that we can immediately tell the client, the HTTP client, that the service is unavailable, 503. Um, this source queue has an offer method, so we can offer requests or elements into the running stream, and that gives us a future of offer, a queue offer result, which could be enqueued or dropped or some other error which should not happen. 
Now, how do we get things out of the running stream? In order to do that, we have to pass along a promise, okay? Um, if you look at this example here, we have a source queue, which takes a request and a promise for the response. And then after running this process here, or feeding, sorry, feeding those tuples into that process, we um, have a sync for each where we complete the promise. And this completed promise or the related future can then be used to complete the HTTP request, as you will see in a moment. What we also have to consider here is what that means for the process. Our source queue is now it takes now tuples or pairs of request and promise. Well, that means that our process needs to thread along a promise. Is that nice? Who thinks this is nice? Good. <laughs> it's not nice at all. And therefore, we use a new feature called flow with context, which is essentially just a wrapper around a flow of pair A and context to objects, and then um, offering all the methods you know, like map and filter, which only work on the first element. So the context is transparently threaded along. So if our process now is a flow with context, which takes a request and a promise of res for the response, producing a response and not changing the type of the context object, which could be done, but we don't do it, then we can call map and all these things only on the request. We could even then, at some point when we need it, get back the tuples by calling as flow, because then we have the request and the promised response. And with these tools in place, let's try to make our example a little better. So what has been prepared now is the following. We are still in the API. So in the API down there, in the route, we change things. But before we can change things, we need to set up a proper running flow. And we call that processor because a processor is for running processes, okay? I hope you like the wording. So let's take a source.q. And uh, the type here should be from shuffle text, sorry, shuffle text to promise uh, text shuffled. Size one and overflow strategy drop new. Good. Then we, we go via our um, um, text shuffler dot process that is handed in as a parameter here. And then we do our for each, sorry, we go to sync dot for each. And here we get out the pairs again. So we have our shuffle text and we have the promise and we can try to complete the promise successfully, of course. And then we just run that, sorry. We have a materialize and scope, so with this will run, which means here we get our source queue with complete. Cool. Now this is a running stream and we can feed requests into it. And that's what we are going to do down there. We need a promise, and for that purpose we are using an expiring promise because we want to have a timeout, right? Um, and an expiring promise is just a utility class, which is defined here. Not too hard to understand. You can take a look later if you want to see more details. It's a promise which expires after the processor timeout given here. So we take our shuffle, no, text shuffler processor, and we offer a tuple of this um, shuffle text command with the text that has been extracted from the request. 
and our promise text shuffled. Yeah, okay, cool. So that we can offer, and then we will get back a future. <clears throat> so we have use flat map and look at whether this request and promise for the response tuple could be enqueued. If so, we have our promise text shuffled. Um, we can um, get the future from the promise and we can call map to extract the text, which is a string. That should be the shuffled string. In other cases, like dropped, we fail the future with a processor unavailable, um, just some name. Um, processor unavailable is just a case class exception defined in this project. And case other, which should not happen, but we still need to take care of that, also failed with a processor error with the cause other. Okay. So this is really all we need. So we get, sorry, wrong one. The shuffle text here is a future string. So that is what we get from feeding the request into this running stream. We get it out again as a future of string. And that we can use to complete the request. Cool. Let's see whether this works. <coughs> Okay, listening. One, two, yeah, seems to work. And the nice thing is, if I now send a lot of requests, and you have seen I've uh, put the buffer sizes to one and I have a delay and all of that, um, we get a couple of responses. Where have I started? So here you can see 503, service unavailable, 503, service unavailable, here 200 and 200. Four requests, two could be enqueued, the others were dropped and rejected in a fail-fast fashion. I think this is really nice. Okay, that was the first step. Um, what we have achieved now is that we can hand requests with local uh, processes, but we need to be able to branch out into other processes and then branch out into remote processes. Okay, so how can we link two processes, two running processes, two streams? Well, there's a feature called Merge Hub. The Merge Hub is a little bit like this source queue because it allows you to connect into a running stream but it doesn't have this overflow strategy thingy because you don't really offer. It's really for linking to streams and therefore the linked stream will just back pressure the other one. And that's what we want if we have streams that branch out into substreams. Not real substreams, but yeah, branch out into other streams and then the result of these other streams go back. Then we don't want to drop anything, we want to back pressure, right? Dropping should only happen at the very end of the overall process. So the merge hub allows us to start with a source for some elements. We again have to use a request and response tuple. Um, then we go via some process. This again has to be a flow with context to thread along the, um, the promise, which is no longer a promise, by the way. It's already a respondee, sorry for that. Uh, it, it could be a promise locally, but if we want to move on to the cluster where we want to compose uh, streams which run on various nodes, we can no longer use a promise. Do you know why? Yeah, promises don't get serialized. We, we knew that, but we still tried it. <laughs> it took us more than five minutes to figure out what is not working with serialization. That was me, yeah, funny thing. So respondee is just an actor ref, which gets initialized with a promise, and this actor ref can remotely be sent around, and 
You can send a response message to the respondee actor. It's a typed actor. And when you receive the response in time, it will complete the promise, else it will fail the promise. So it's more or less a remotable promise, you could say, which is an actor. Good. Um, so therefore, the whole thing looks very similar to before, but it's not the source queue, it's the merge hub. And here in the sync for each, we have to send this response message to the respondee actor f. Okay? But other than that, the merge hub is similar. So we can hook into some other stream. Um, oh, and that's all. Good. Then let me show you that. Where do I want to move here? Okay, a couple of things have been prepared, but there are still question marks in the code. So let's first take a look at this um, text shuffler and word shuffler again. Um, the word shuffler now is flow with context, um, with the respondee of word shuffled. Um, and in order to, to run that process, we need to apply what I have just shown you. So we go for the merge hub dot source, sorry. Um, do we need the types here? I don't know. Let's try without types. What's wrong? Source, yeah, here we go. Okay, one. Um, then we go via our process. Uh, so we are in the word shuffler. Okay, and then we go to the sync dot for each. This is a new machine. I'm having a hard time typing, as you can see. Um, we have the word shuffled, and we have the respondee, and we can say respondee bang, uh, respondee dot response word shuffled, um, and then we finally can say run. Hooray, seems to work great. Um, now this is all we have to do here in the word shuffler. Um, this is still essentially the same process like before, just shuffling the word, very, very simple process using this method here, which is not important to know. This was the algorithm for shuffling individual words. Um, let's go to the text shuffler. Um, and maybe for you to better understand that, let me go back to this diagram here. Now, the, the text shuffler would be on this node, right? Um, and at some point, it would try to branch out into the word shuffler, which might reside on a different node. It will not reside there yet. That's then the next step. But it would still already be a box of its own, a red box, a running stream of its own, okay? So, how do we get into that into that <laughs> um, word shuffler. Ah, I have forgot to mention what we get back from the merge hub when we um, materialize it, when we call the run method, we get back a sync, okay? So the sync is to be used by other flows as a sync arbitrary times, and every time it gets them materi materialized, it can, it can be materialized arbitrary times, and all these other flows uh, or running streams after materialization can then send elements into that sync, which means they end up here in that source, and then they flow through this uh, linked stream. So therefore, what we have is a sync of shuffle word, respondee word shuffled. Okay, that's what we have. Now, we need a respondee, right? So here we have our shuffle word command. <clears throat> and first we need to create a respondee. So that's a little hard in Akka typed. Um, and therefore I'm, I'm using untyped here. So um, let's first create a promise. Well, P equals promise. We have this uh, tuple we need. Something's wrong here. One too many? No? Um, yeah, this order, thank you. Ooh. 
pesky. And then we create a respond D, so we go to the untyped system, untyped system dot spawn anonymous. We can call spawn anonymous because we have the coexistence conversions here. Um, the behavior is our um, respond D, um, and that takes this promise and a timeout, the word shuffler process timeout. Okay, now we have a shuffle word command. We have a promise in an untapped system. We return all of that for the time being. You will see why. So shuffle word, uh, the promise and the respondee, which we should assign to avail. Okay, cool. Now we have that. In order to feed the shuffle word and the respondee into this other sync, which we have here, we use the also to operation. Also to, now we need to apply some more gymnastic because we have this flow um, of a shuffle word. Sorry, it's a triple, damn. And a promise, promise of this tuple. I wish type inference was better. And finally, we have our respondee. Okay, cool. Then we map that because we don't need all of that. So we have the shuffle word. Oh, sorry for that, shuffle word, the promise and the respondee. We map that to shuffle word only and respondee because that's what we need for the sync, right? The sync here takes shuffle word and respondee. So we can feed that to our word shuffler sync. No? Okay, I screwed something up. I forgot the case, thank you. That should no longer be necessary in Duddy. I still screwed something up. Anyway, I will show you the sample solution in one second. It's probably just some braces and I don't know. And then finally, what we should get back um, here, we use map async. Um, 42 again, of course. And here we have our case, uh, shuffle word, promise, respondee. Uh, by the way, we don't need this, sorry. We don't need this here. We only need the promise, so promise.future, and that should be it. Okay. And I screwed things up, so let me just scroll here to the sample solution, which should more or less look the same, hopefully. Um, I screwed something up here anyway. So as you can see here, um, those lines allow you to feed um, stuff into this remotable other stream. So we're using the, well, that's just a little boilerplate to create a respondee, okay? Um, we use also to, to feed that stuff into that sink and then we have map async. And of course, this is all generic code, so uh, we have a library which does all of that and gives you an into method. You just call into the sync and all is good. Um, thank you. So let's run that and see whether it really works. So in the main method I haven't shown you here, uh, in the main uh, uh, class, we are actually uh, running this text shuffler um, with this word shuffler sync and a word shuffler sync is really running the process. So this is, this is actually this, this sync you get. So we have two running processes. Um, okay. Ooh, still running, very good. Now finally, we're still on one node. We want to go to two nodes. We want to deploy some stuff on other nodes and then connect the different processes. So how can we stream across cluster nodes? And I still have 10 minutes, but that should, that should be fine. In order to do that, we have to use sync refs. They have been added quite recently to Arca streams and they allow uh, to stream across the network. Um, here's a nice diagram, or it has been here. Wait a moment. Where is it? Stream refs. Come on. It's gone. 
uh, here. Oh, it's not. so. Yeah, I don't know whether you can can see that, but uh, you can look it up in the Arca docs. That's how these stream refs work in the case of a sync ref. Essentially, um, what we do is we use the API streamrefs.syncref, uh, which gives us a source. We can then use in a stream. Uh, so we uh, go to our sync and then we run that particular uh, flow we have defined and we get back a sync ref. And this sync ref can then be used to send it around across the cluster and the sync ref gives you a sync and that sync can be materialized. And then uh, all the elements flowing into that sync on the remote node end up here in this sync on this node. This is quite awesome, huh? And it's taking into consideration a lot of the, the, the problems that might occur uh, on the network, like sequencing and buffering, delay for, 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 for the latency, and it's pretty awesome. Um, and uh, this is what we need. We also need a kill switch. Why do we need the kill switch? Well, we need that to hook into the coordinated shutdown where we run those uh, remotable uh, flows. So the example we have seen f uh, earlier for the, uh, for the word shuffler was the merge hub. We add uh, a single kill switch here. So we can then call the shutdown method on the kill switch during coordinated shutdown. And that will ensure that um, all the elements which are already here in the process will um, be continued or all the requests which have ended up here have been accepted will be completed before the whole thing is shut down. And finally, we need a restart sync because when we are in the cluster, when we are in the network, things might go wrong. So our sync we get once might no longer be alive. So we need to restart that. Let me show you how this is working. Okay, so what we have in place here for the word shuffler, we have converted that into an actor, which is a protocol called get sync ref. It's a command you send it and you get back uh, a sync ref. Cool. So whenever it receives this message, get sync ref, we do what I have shown you with streamrefs.syncref.via, or I think it's a dot two sync, sync, and then we run it. And that gives us a future of the sync ref. So we have to do the uncomplete. And then okay, in case success, value is a sync ref. We send it back to our reply to actor. Else, we just um, log. Blah, blah, blah. Doesn't matter. I'm running out of time. Sorry. The exact error message is not that important. So that is how we could uh, reply with a sync ref. Um, and we have to use that in the text shuffler. And um, that is shown here. So we have a reference to the word shuffler. We ask it to get a sync ref with an ask timeout and so on. And we also want to recover with trying again. Because this could, of course, go wrong, for example, if uh, Arca cluster sharding or cluster singleton or whatever we are using to deploy the word shuffler actor um, decides to redeploy that actor on some other node or if the, it gets restarted on the same node after failing, whatever. So we recover um, and then we have a future of the sync ref. Great. So the last missing piece is the, the, the um, the restart sync, because um, when something goes wrong while the sync is at work, so we have um, uh, we have got it here. It's working with our uh, nice um, 
process down here, but then uh, Kubernetes decides to redeploy the pods. Um, it will no longer work, so we need to restart the sync to continue our processes. So here we use restart sync with back off. Um, we have to apply some back offs, um, and then we have to provide a factory function for the sync. Uh, unfortunately, the API, the ARCA API, wants us to uh, create a sync here. There's an issue I have created that a future of sync would also work. It's not yet there. So we would word shuffler sync ref, call it here, and then await just some time. So with that, it should compile. Of course, it would not run. So let me G roll next. And we have some proper timeouts here. Um, and the final demonstration will show you how this is really running on multiple nodes. Okay, let's, oh, sorry, it's over there. Hmm. I'm starting it again. <clears throat> Okay, the first node is up, so this should already work. Let me see. Okay, cool. Mm, the word shuffler actor, by the way, is deployed using cluster singleton. So I have started the first node first, so the word shuffler actor with its process is sitting there um, on this node, okay? Um, let's start. A second node, which will uh, listen on a second interface. If I have added it, I don't know. <laughs> okay, it's listening there, so just in time, we go to the second node. And hooray, that does the remote streaming. So let me go back to this picture here. What we have seen now is this is node one, this is node two. We have sent a request to node two that was talking to the word shuffler, which is sitting on node one. Um, and we can even stop that, uh, which should make um, this whole thing still t uh, work because we have the backup sync, which now reconnects, uh, tries to get a new sync ref. Uh, it gets it because cluster singleton has moved the actor to node number two and everything is working again. All right, that was the demo. And uh, yeah, I'm just in time, that's great. Um, we have put this feature into a, a library called Streamy which is currently lacking behind. We haven't yet really used the flow with context there properly, so some things are a little different. Uh, but nevertheless, it's out there. You can take a look and uh, look at the commit history and see all the various things we tried and uh, sometimes failed and then improved. Um, and I want to thank you for your uh, attention. You can take a look at the demo code and the slides. They are available on GitHub. And I wish you a really nice uh, and entertaining Scaldi's conference. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm around for questions. I, I think we are, have run out of time, but or let's try we can, to find me. We can allow one or two, uh, two questions, but you have to be very, very brief if you want. Okay. Okay. So who would like, but to be very brief? Um, instead of using promises and all that follows from that, uh, why not use a body flow like HTTP itself does and just match requests with responses that come out on the other end? This will also, this will also give back, uh, back pressure in the other direction. Sorry, I didn't understand that. Uh, HTTP exposes a BD flow, bidirectional flow, with requests in one direction and responses in the other. 
why not use that model instead of promises which promises need all the extra stuff you described in half the lecture. Okay, so I think if I understand your question correctly, you are suggesting we should use ACA HTTP as a layer, no? Okay, so maybe we should then discuss that later because, yeah. So the intention of this approach is to really have domain processes which are only sending around domain uh, elements, domain messages, no HTTP related stuff. But yeah, we can discuss that later. Another question? Then, for the one who wants to stay in this room, there will be massively parallel distribu uh, distributed Scala comp uh, com oh, no, sorry, <laughs> compilation, and you, if you are staying. 